taking a look at the flame by Cheap Trick today, and uh, I've got a very clean tone going on my telly. I'm in the mid position, very clean and warm setting on the amp. Well, bright, but warm, if you know what I mean. And I'm using the uh, Sonicake chorus pedal. OK, so I'll put that right up on the screen so you can see what my uh, settings are. The fabulous folks at Sonicake sent it over to me, and I love it. All right, so let's go through this bit by bit. I'll do the main guitar part, which is really what uh, Robin Zander would play uh, in their live performances, which were always absolutely <laughs> incredible. Now, he did vary it. There would be little variations in there. So I'll show you how I play it, which is, you know, pretty close or really close to the recording, and then explain how you can kind of mix things up a little bit and make it your own, okay? So we've got that opening phrase, which is based around an A sus2 chord. All right. And you can see on the tab I have. That's the pattern that's most consistent. But when the recording starts out in the studio, all you hear is just right into it from that A string. But as you loop it around, uh, you'll, you'll play it the way it's written on the tab. So you can see I'm doing two downstrokes, followed by an upstroke, which grabs both the G and the D strings. And then you're kind of bouncing off the D string back and forth. But let that open A string ring the entire time. And then we have... Now, that can be a tricky move. There's a couple of different ways to play it. If you uh, watch him play it, he has a tendency, if I remember right, to go like this and then lay his finger down and then even bar to go to this chord over here. The way I play it, which seems to work best for me, in other words, makes it sound the smoothest to my ears, is like this. So I use my first finger, go straight to my pinky, then bring my pinky over, and then these two fingers land in the fourth fret on the D string and the G string. So we have... I slip this finger under here. If you want, you can just bar like uh, he does, uh, but I just slip my pinky underneath like that and then follow through with what you see on the tab. Then keeping those two fingers there, place your first finger in the second fret on the B string and then back. So we have Now the part that you'll hear the most variation on is what happens with those two fingers, those two strings, the D and the G, in between the movement on the B string. Sometimes you'll hear You know, it varies the most right there. So you can just play that however you want and make it your own. Uh, but the way I've written it on the tab is the way I like to play it. Maybe not all the time, you know, but most of the time. And I think it sounds pretty sweet. to a C-sharp minor chord and then simply take your first finger off so you have the open A string. I like to pull my finger down here to anchor it and I think that uh, Xander actually does the same thing if I remember right. So what we're doing actually is moving from a uh, C-sharp minor to an A major seven, and that's a really sweet chord change as well. And you'll hear a lot of variation in that also, okay? Uh, the way I've got it tabbed is simply. But again, you'll hear a lot of variations on that part. Again, 
and just make it your own, play it however it sounds good to you. And I'll show you how I play the next section. And again, there are natural variations in this, so feel free to mosh it up, especially in your right hand. That's where all the uh, sort of ad-libby stuff is happening. So we move to a uh, E suspended chord and resolve that to an E major chord. Okay, and the way I play that is how you see it on the tab. Kind of keeps things moving. And then we go to a B major chord. And again, any variations you want to put in, I can't stress that enough. Uh, the way I play it is the way you see it on the tab. And then I do the same thing on the A chord. So we have... from the C sharp minor to the A major 7 to the E sus to the E and all of that we have right into the chorus there's a couple of different ways you can play that too if you watch them live uh, what you really see Xander do is this finger so what he's doing is he's barring across the A the D and the G strings and then fretting the fourth fret on the D string with his ring finger and the fourth fret on the G string with his pinky and he's kind of pulling his ring finger off so that's actually a harmony to the vocal line so again, it's... to an A chord. But you also hear Rick Nilsson playing. So again, you can do it either way by pulling your first finger off or doing the Xander bar and playing it like that. Or a combination of both, which is basically what I did when I played it. Sounds pretty good either way. And then, of course, we move into the chorus of the song, which is an E major, B major, and then A sus2. And I'll show you a couple of cool things you can do with this. Uh, but for now, we have those three chords. Keep your strumming nice and loose, just basically alternate strokes, uh, but you can break it up a little bit. You know, anything you want to do to uh, keep it interesting, but you want to maintain that really relaxed flow. So the chord progression is E, B, A sus2, and you want to do that twice. Then on the third go around, we play E. B, back to E, to A. So let me play that whole thing for you. is uh, basically almost like power chords uh, but I'm using the open A string and then second fret on the D string second fret on the G string of course making a uh, A chord 
And I'm muting a little bit back here, okay? Just driving it with those eighth note downstrokes. And then we form that same B chord that we used on. So we've got the second fret on the A string, four on the D string, and four on the G string. Then we've got an A over C sharp, which is still just an inverted A chord, but I'm barring the G and the D at the second fret, and then fretting the fourth fret on the A string. So we have through all of it again. But <laughs> what I wanted to offer up was a little bit that you can add to the chorus if you want to, especially if you're playing it by yourself. It's got that great keyboard part over the A chord. So that's kind of sweet if you want to add that in there. So what you would do is play the E chord, the B chord, and then come up here and form the A2, just a different inversion from the A2. And as you can see on the tab, I've got the first E string fretted at the seventh fret, and I'm doing that with my pinky. Then drop it to the fifth fret using your first finger, then fourth, then open. And that can sound pretty sweet if you want to add that in there. Now there's a little variation that happens at the end of the song, and it happens on the chorus after the guitar solo. right over the lyrical part whenever you need someone to lay your heart and head upon. And right when they hit that lyric head upon, they play an E major chord with a G sharp in the bass. Now you don't have to play it the way I'm playing it, I just like it because it sounds really big and full. Uh, you can just play it as a power chord version, 4th fret on the 6th uh, string and 7th fret on the A string. You can just do it that way if you want. And then it's right back to... Now, if you want to play it big, you can see the chord up on the screen. So what you have to do is kind of mute the A string out by letting your pinky kind of flop across it so that you don't hear that, okay? But that sounds really nice. That's a really cool little subtle change that they put in there. All right, so it's on to the guitar solo. <laughs> it's 
too much fun to play. Uh, so I'll just put the tab up on the screen and walk you through that one. Maybe a little bit more sustain than I'm using right here. Uh, but here it is, nice and slow. <laughs> So there you go with The Flame by Cheap Trick, including the guitar solo. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, video and uh, all the best to everyone as always. And we'll see you guys real soon.